Hello everyone. So today's chapter is the concert and it is written by Shanta Rao. So with regards to this chapter, what firstly I like you all to know what exactly is concert? What do you mean by this term concert? Now you all must have seen that you get various ads into newspapers where they say about concerts that are being held at various grounds. So, concert is basically any musical concert that is held at a particular place and the audience comes to watch it. So, that is what concert is all about. Now, giving you a gist about Shanta Rao. So, Shanta Rao is an Indian classical dancer who knows Bharatnatyam, Kathakali, Kuchipudi, all of these being the various traditional classical forms of South Indian dances. She is also the receiver of Padma Shri. Now, what do you understand by Padma Shri? I am sure you all have heard this word again and again where many people are being felicitated with Padma Shri. Now, Padma Shri is basically the fourth highest civilian award that any person receives. The first one being Bharat Ratna Award, the second one being uh, the Padma Vibhushan Award, the third one being the Padma Bhushan Award and the fourth one being the Padma Shri Award. So, like I said, this is the fourth greatest civilian award that any person receives. Now, I'll give you a bit of gist as to what, what this entire chapter is all about. It's about the bonding of siblings, that is the brother and the sister and how they are emotionally vulnerable, how they are emotionally connected and that is what is shown in the entire chapter. I'm not going to give you a lot of gist so I, because I don't want you all to spoil the ending. So, that is why let's go ahead and dive right into the chapter. Now, there are two main important words in the very first page. The first word being uttered endlessly. The meaning of that is to express or to say. The second word is unbidden. The meaning of this is without any command. Now, unbidden is used in relation to the mother worshipping the idols. So here it is said that when she starts chanting her prayers, it basically goes without any command and spontaneously on her own. With regards to this chapter, I am going to role play the various characters. Now, with regards to that, role playing is because so that you understand this chapter better. Now, the three main characters of this chapter are Smita, the 16-year-old girl, Anant, her brother, and the mother of these two. Now, let's start with the very first paragraph of this chapter. This is how it unfolds. Here I am enacting as Smita, the 16-year-old girl. There is a concert of Pandit Shankar happening at the Sanmukhananda Auditorium. And here I am as the mother. Shh! You will wake the boy up. Please be quiet. Do not talk so loudly. Here I am as Anant, the little brother. As Anant, here it's shown that Anant is not doing really well in terms of health. 
So here Anant is basically lying on the bed and now he's trying to get up. So here on hearing that Smita has just said that Pandit Ravi Shankar is going to perform at Sanmukhananda auditorium. He tries to get up from the bed and with a very low voice he says Pandit Ravi Shankar is going to perform. This is a chance of lifetime. I have always wanted to hear him. Now coming back to the mother. Here the mother is trying to calm Anant down. How is she trying to calm Anant down? By saying, shh, calm down. You have all the time in the world. Rest, you need to rest down. Now, but now since Anant knows that Pandit Ravi Shankar is coming, he is very excited. So in that excitement, he says that this is a chance of lifetime. And then he starts coughing, coughing really bad. So how does that go? <coughs> <coughs> so this is how it goes. And when that happens, what happens is, while uh, Anant was trying to get up out of bed, he actually used one of his elbows and got up on his bed. Although very immediately, he fell down and sat on the bed. And while that was happening, what did his mother do was, his mother basically looked at the idols and this is what she did. She joined her hands and she started saying prayers, chanting prayers. So this is how it goes. He stood up on his own hands. I can't believe that. So, with regards to this entire scene, what is really happening is, Smita broke the great news of Pandit Ravi Shankar coming to Sanmukananda Auditorium. And here, the mother is trying to tell Anand that do not get too excited, you need to rest. And after... Anand starts coughing, what happens is his mother removes an oxygen cylinder from under the bed and puts up a mask onto Anand so that he can breathe. Now what do you understand by this? This means that Anand wasn't doing very great with regards to his health. He wasn't in good terms with his health and he was seriously very ill. And when I say seriously very ill, it means that probably he did not have many days to live. Why do I say that? Because he could not complete one sentence without coughing. He needed an oxygen cylinder after speaking barely two or three sentences. So what does this mean? This means that Anant was going down with terms of health. It means that his health was deteriorating. Now, you see the word in the last paragraph of this page, the word used is self-reproach. Now, we come to the part where Smita is saying, how did Anand fall so ill? Now, once Anand was getting so excited and he started coughing, Smita basically went into self-reproach. What does self-reproach mean? Self-reproach means blaming oneself for something. So once Anand started coughing, what happened was Smita was blaming herself for getting him so excited. Why was that? Because Anand got so excited and he started speaking so much and because of that, he started coughing and he needed an oxygen cylinder. So now, Smita is trying to explain us how did Anand fall so ill. She says that Anand had very few days to live and they were originally from Gaganpur. Where is Gaganpur located? It is located in Uttar Pradesh. So they were originally from Gaganpur, but they had come down to Bombay for Anand for his 
treatments and now they were staying in a small apartment which was owned by their aunt aunt sushila and in that apartment they were staying in a small room where the four of them anant smita their mother and their father were all staying smita slowly and gradually explains us how did cancer come into being with anant anant was doing really very well with regards to his health and smita also explains us how he was doing academically and with regards to extracurricular activities here she says that he was a great table tennis player while he was studying in school in kagunpur he played very well table tennis he was also a great runner and they were also taking sitar lessons so all of this was going on so well and then suddenly anant falls ill now with regards to sitar uh, smita specifically emphasizes on that because this chapter being about classical music smita says that while they were learning sitar anant was basically more matured in terms of music as compared to smita when i say more matured it means that he was doing he was picking up the tunes much faster than smita and with regards to the classical music with regards to sitar anant could form his own tunes now how great is that usually when we learn music we start learning music by copying the tunes of others but your smita says that anant was able to form his own music his own tunes and that was very appreciative by their guru so what does guru mean here guru is the word that's used now what does guru mean guru means that whenever you learn any kind of classical music or dance or drama you usually have some master who teaches you and whom you look up to so that person who teaches you is known as the guru so with regards to sitar which anant and smita were learning their guru was very appreciative of anant because he could make his own tunes now in the next paragraph smita explains that they came to bombay then they lived with aunt sushila and how cancer came into being she remembers the very few very first days when anant was admitted into the hospital the doctors were speaking terms that neither smita nor her parents were able to understand so when i say they were speaking terms or words that neither smita or Uh, her parents were able to understand what do you mean by that it means that they were talking about complicated terms complicated terms in terms of the disease that anant was going through cancer and they were such complicated terms and given the state of anant it was very clear that anant was eventually going to die yes you heard it right he was eventually going to die that means anant being such a young boy he did not have many days to live